We appreciate your attendance, and I'm sure all our wonderful candidates do as well. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Sandy Lujan, who is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Pat. Please stand. Put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, I would like to introduce our moderator, Dr. Pat Chin, or better known, Dr. Patricia Chin. <laughs> And um, also, we have the introduction of our timekeeper, which is Ms. Lisa Yang. You want to stand up or wave? And her assistant, Kim Tan. And uh, we have Joan Marina and uh, Maria Novak, who are going to be our screeners of your questions. And we have, well, you met Sandy already, and we have Maureen Bateman in the back. Did I catch all of the seroptimists that are here? Okay, then I will turn the program over to Dr. Chin. Thank you, President Pat. Again, the Sir Optimists of Monterey Park Rosemead are very happy to have this forum this evening for you have an opportunity to hear the candidates and their views on some major issues. For those that you have not been to one of our forums before, we ask that you do not applaud or cheer for your candidates or um, any responses to the candidates when they answer their questions so that we can most effectively use our time and uh, get more time for questions from you in the audience. Each candidate is going to give a brief statement for introduction and then they will answer three questions that have been prepared for them by the uh, Seroptimus Club. Uh, at that time, we will have a short intermission after that in which you can um, be certain that your questions, if you have them, have been turned into one of the Seroptimus members. And then we will reconvene after a 10-minute uh, recess and answer questions from the floor. So at this time, I will uh, call the roll of the candidates. Mr. Avila. Mr. Estrada. Mr. Jin. Here. Mr. Ng. Here. Mr. Leong. Here. Mr. Sarnoy. Here. Ms. Rial Sebastian. Here. And Mr. Wong. Here. All councils, all candidates for the city council being present, I will now uh, ask the candidates to each make their uh, two minute opening remarks, starting with Mr. Avila. Excuse me, don't take time from him. Could you uh, please share the microphone with him, Mr. Estrada? Hello. I've been in this residence for, in this beautiful city for my entire life, which I expands mm -hmm. over 43 years, and which I plan to stay the rest of my life. I love this city. The individuals who run for city council positions do for so many reasons, not overly, not overly I'm not a, overly complicated person. I want things that most people desire. Those things that we everyday simple folks desire, which things such as safe place to raise a family, good schools, etc. Unfortunately, our society is changing rapidly. While so changes are positive and some that have a negative consequences, at any time there's a there <laughs> This is rough. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there are societies changing rapidly. While there are still there are changes that will be a period of adjustment that is necessary, I feel that these times we feel. <clears throat> I'm Joe Avila. I'm running for city council. I'm just a simple person, simple man, and I'll keep it simple. I'm not held here to change a whole lot of things. In fact, I love the way the city's being run. There's a few things that I don't care about, and I'll make those cha changes. 
I just need a seat and I will not fail the city. I love the city. I'm the handyman, the handyman Joe. Joe Avila for city council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Estrada. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Luis Estrada. I'm a candidate for city council. I'm a Monterey Park homeowner and a Monterey Park planning commissioner, also a member of the traffic commission as well. I'm married to uh, my wife, Ophelia. We have three children here in the city, uh, Caroline, David, who's been, who attends Sher High School. We also have Mark, who attends, uh, who all attend Monterey Park schools here in the area. I'm very active in the community, and I'll tell you that it's very important that everybody, that any candidate that comes up here and asks for your vote, that they are the type of caliber of candidate that you're looking for. I will tell you that I started serving for my community many years ago, serving our country in the United States Marine Corps, uh, at serving our city fire department as a reserve firefighter. So my commitment to my community has always been looking after the best welfare of our residents, looking out for their safety. So my main issues are public safety, making sure that we address the fiscal issue here in the city, because the fiscal issue doesn't just stay in Monterey Park, it goes beyond Monterey Park, it goes over to the state and it's a national issue. It's actually a global economy uh, that is suffering at this time. So we need the proper leadership to make sure that we move our city forward. But I'll tell you with Monterey Park because I lived here most of my life. In the 1980s, I remember as a child, Monterey Park had a J.C. Penney. We even had a Trader Joe's, we had a car dealership, we had two, we had Camino Real Chevrolet, we had Superior Pontiac on North Atlantic. And then we also had uh, more shopping variety. We had Hughes Market, and we had a number of variety of stores that can offer a number of variety of goods and services to our residents. Well, we don't have that anymore. And that's one of the reasons why we're also suffering as a city. We don't have the sales tax revenue. So as a planning commissioner, being familiar with land use issues, I will fight hard to make sure that our sales taxes maintain low and that we have positive leadership on the city council and move the city forward. I ask for your vote. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Mr. Jin. Oh, first, I'd like to thank, thank you, the Sir Optimus International Monterey Park Roseby, for the invitation to this candidate forum. Uh, my name is Bob Jin. I've been a resident and homeowner of this city for more than 50 years. I was raised in the city and raised my family in this city. I'm very proud of my children and especially my two lovely granddaughters. I have been involved with the community for many years, serving as a member of the PTA for the Brightwood Elementary School and Marquepo High School, and supporting and volunteering my time to many of the event, events in the city of Monterey Park. I currently serve on the Board of Education of the Alhambra Unified School District and was just recently re-elected to my third term. I have a proven track record on the Board of Education, keeping a balanced budget, improving student, student test scores, focusing on student achievement, and improving and or building new facilities for our schools. For the last eight years, I have worked to build one of the best school districts in the San Gabriel Valley, in, in which families want to come and live in, in the city of Monterey Park. This is possibly the number one reason why family move, move into our city. I decided to run for the city council because I was concerned about the direction of our city has taken. I share your concerns over public safety, growth and development, the concerns of our senior citizens, and especially our city budget. Being a public servant is about the residents and providing the needs and services for our community and working in a collaborative effort to secure those services. I would work to move forward for our city to a better future. I don't make promises, but I will, I will promise to work for the best interests of our city. And thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ng. First, I want to thank the Seroptimus, Seroptimus International Monterey Park and Rosemead for organizing this forum. I welcome you all here today and those viewing on Channel 3. My name is Mitchell Ng. As your council member and former city treasurer, I served as your fiscal watchdog for the past 10 years. I was elected by you, the residents of Monterey Park, to protect your interests and make the city more transparent. I fought against giving our trash company a 15-year, $100 million contract without competitive bidding. We pay more for trash collection than other cities. The facts are here. I fought against awarding a $1.6 million city contract to a former council member, uh, and the facts are here, and the council member is no longer here. I stopped a car club casino developer wanting to build in the city of Monterey Park. The facts are here. I stopped the city from forgiving a $450,000 city loan to a local business, and the facts are here. I fought against the past city attorney who billed us over $1.2 million in legal fees annually, and the facts are here. I'm fighting to end the health benefits 
for life for retired elected officials, which will cost millions of dollars to taxpayers. The facts are here. I'll stop the city from rezoning residential neighborhoods south of Garvey Avenue to commercial zoning. I stopped residents, restaurants from building next to your home. The facts are here. I fought against the city spending millions of dollars in legal fees on the marketplace by the 60 freeway when the marketplace doesn't, isn't even owned by the city. The land is owned in a trust by the father of Athens disposal owner. The facts are here. I care deeply about the city and I will continue to be your fiscal watchdog. Thank you. Mr. Leong. Good evening. It's truly an honor to be invited to participate in tonight's Soroptimist Candidate Forum. This 27-year tradition exemplifies the Soroptimist dedication and commitment to the welfare of our great city of Monterey Park. My name is Hans Leong, and I serve the community as a Los Angeles County Deputy Probation Officer. During my 12-year career, I've had the unique opportunity to work with many diverse groups, organizations, and departments in our community. And this has given me valuable insight, not only at the local level, but at the county and state levels as well. I have served the past four years as the president of the Asian Pacific Probation Association, at which time, through the course of my duties, I am grateful to have nurtured relationships with many community, labor, and political leaders. I serve as a commissioner on the Monterey Park Recreations and Parks Commission, and I'm a member of the California Probation, Parole, and Corrections Association, where I serve as a delegate at the state level. I am a member of our Deputy Probation Officers Union, and I serve as a board member for the Asian Youth Center. I'm deeply concerned about our problems that our city faces at this time. Our finances are not in order. We face challenges with our employee pensions as well as developments in the city. And the behavior of our current council has been dysfunctional and toxic for much too long. How can we have a functional city without a functional council? We need to put aside our differences and plan for our future. We need to stand side by side and look forward together and not at each other thinking of harsh words to say. In the end, this is our city, our community, our future. I believe that in life there are those moments when one has to decide whether to look away and ignore the problems or stand up and work to make things better. I believe that life has presented me with this challenge and although it would be easier to walk away, I know deep down that I cannot. Our time is now and I embrace this opportunity to further serve my community. Thank you again, and thank you again for all of you to being here this evening, and thank you again to the Soroptimus for providing this forum for the residents. Thank you. Mr. Sarnoy. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to the Soroptimus Club for giving me this opportunity, and I also want to say hi to everyone in, for, in the languages I speak. Um, gracias a todos por el apoyo, y bienvenidos para uh, atender este uh, partido. Um, 我很高兴认识你们,你们好. Uh, um, and thank you very much. Um, as, a, as a council candidate here, it's an honor to be here and a privilege to be speaking in front of everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I was born and raised in Monterey Park. I went to school here, elementary school. I went to college, East LA College. I got graduated. And from there, I got a scholarship to Mich Northern Michigan University. And I came back. Uh, to Azusa Pacific University to get my master's degree. And what I want to do in my focus, I want to create jobs and support the long-term economic development here in the city of Monterey Park. But I also want to give back because I want this, the residents of Monterey Park to have the same opportunity that I did growing up over here. And for the benefit of our youth, I recently got appointed to uh, the youth mentor to the youth advisory board because my involvement with the youth here, because I believe they are the future, but I also want to give back to the seniors because they deserve it, and they, they deserve so much for giving to our community here. But at the same time, um, I believe that our city is going through a lack of debt and a lack of jobs, and they need someone new to move forward, and that new person is me. And I believe I bring creativity and innovation to the table. And I'm here, and I'm counting on your support and I'm, I just want to share my thoughts with you tonight and ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Real Sebastian. 
Good evening. My name is Teresa Riel Sebastian. The corner of any successful city is transparency. Transparency means openness, placing the interest of the residents before any other interest. My goal for the City Council is to have a forum where we can transparently discuss our city's issues. Issues like balancing the budget, following the open bid process, implementing sustainable green policies, increase our sales tax by nurturing our relationships with existing businesses while fostering new relationships with the American retail tenants, creating local jobs, support our fire and police departments, protect senior citizen services, and promote excellence for all students in Monterey Park. Running local government is getting more sophisticated. The city must have a city council that can monitor and identify legal, business, and financial issues. As an attorney, businesswoman, and EDAC Economic Development Advisory Commissioner, I am the only candidate with financial, legal, and business experience to address and monitor these issues for you. I attend city council meetings on a regular basis and I make it a point to be prepared. I'm willing to put myself on the line for you as I step to the podium and ask questions and offer innovative, out-of-the-box solutions. One of my philosophies in life is if you have a problem, find a solution. Don't sweep it under the rug. You see, I grew up in Monterey Park and I returned to Monterey Park, so I have a unique perspective. We are stepping into a new age of progression, the age of transition. This new age is inclusive and diverse, and our city council must mirror that. I am ready and qualified to usher in the new progressive positive reality for Monterey Park. I will work hard, listen to you, and make a positive difference. I am ready to serve you as your public servant. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wong. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anthony Wong. I have been a businessman since 1965. And I thank uh, the Optimist Club, uh, Sir Optimist Club International for sponsoring uh, this candidate forum this evening. We all know that an elected official is a public servant. The elected official is elected by you to serve, to listen to you, to care about all of you. I'm sure that you have been watching our city council meeting. And I want to make sure that all the council members will be working together in a positive manner, a business manner, and in a constructive manner, so that we will all work together. We respect each other, and we have to take care of city business, put all the personal matters aside, and we move our city forward. About 16 years ago, I know that our residents need to have the kind of shopping their business so that we can stay in the city to shop our needs. All the cities around the country now are strive to make sure that we can keep the residents to live, to work, to shop, and to play in the city. So that about 16 years ago, I myself, serving as a member of the Economic Development Advisory Committee, we propose to change the zoning on North Atlantic Garvey Garvey for mixed use so that we can bring back national stores and all the tenants, all the residents can walk to shop in our city. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll now move to the first of the prepared uh, questions. Question number one, public employees benefits pensions, administrative leave, along with huge carryovers and distributions upon leaving the organization or retiring, have made a significant impact on Monterey Park's finances. For the most part, these are contained in employee contracts or public employee union association contracts. What specific actions would you take to reverse this trend of huge payouts if you would? Describe what you will do to overcome the resistance from the Employees Association. Let's start with Mr. Wong and then move to the right. Thank you. Uh, we are all facing the difficulties, particularly during this economic downturn. Uh, we have heard about uh, the pension funds, uh, the sick leave, the holiday, vacation pay, etc. 
And this is the problem throughout the whole California. And we are aware of the problem. Our previous city council in 1994 realized that because of those accumulated sick leave, holiday, and vacation pays, will hurt the financial condition of the city. They already put a cap on the uh, vacation pay, sick leave, and holiday pay. And we do further. We already met together and instruct our city manager to do a thorough study and making sure that all the staff working in the city of Monterey Park will work together with the city and we put a cap on the sick leave, the vacation pay, and the holiday pay so that the city will be able to pay them when they retire. So this is what we have done, and we are going to look into that further. If we need to do a further restriction or reduce the pension funds, the retirement funds, the sick leave pay, uh, the holiday pay, and also the vacation pay. So we are doing that. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Riel Sebastian. I believe that unlimited non-restricted sick pay and vacation drains our finances for our city. I believe that we should follow a use it or lose it approach. Monterey Park is a community that values family. And I believe that vacation strengthens that bond because it creates long-term memories. It creates a harmonious balance between work and family life. In turn, you get a well-rounded and productive employee. So my suggestion is take your vacation. Employees must take the vacation, their vacation during the year in which it was uh, accrued. If the employee decides to cash it out, that is fine, but they have to cash it out at the end of the year, and it will be paid out at the rate during which it was accrued. Sick leave. I also believe that sick leave should be used or lost. If you're sick, stay home, rest, take care of yourself. We will see you at the office when you're better. According to one of the uh, union contracts that I found online, there is no limit on sick leave for individuals, and when they reach a certain uh, tenure here with the city, they are paid out 100%. Well, that happened to two of our former employees. They were paid out hundreds of thousands of dollars, and our city was hit hard. And it is my understanding that there are other employees that will be retiring with the same type of packages very soon. Pensions. I believe that the city and employees should each contribute one half to the pension. And the city's portion will not vest until the employee has been with the city for a certain amount of time. We need to include in our labor agreement some kind of economic benchmark. I don't mind paying a little bit more during the, the good times, but I do think that it is unfortunate that we have to do furloughs and let people go during the hard times. I would rather us have a benchmark so that the employees know exactly what they will get during the various times. I understand both sides. You see, I was laid off before. I understood that although this was a corporate decision, I felt, I, you know, I felt really bad, uh, and it was really difficult. I would have preferred that my salary would have been reduced, because after all, 70% of something is better than 100% of nothing. I think my suggestions are a good compromise, but I am willing to be open-minded and listen. Remember that to the extent that any of the rights have already vested with our individuals, we cannot do anything about those. Any policy changes will be on an ongoing forward basis. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sarnoy. Well, thank you. Um, well, we all know if we continue to do what we're doing, um, we're going to continue to dig ourselves in a hole regarding the de budget deficit. And there are some many alternatives that I've uh, researched regarding um, the, these huge payouts towards the employers and employees, the city employees. I actually looked at how LA County um, works with their employees and similar to how they work, um, usually there was actually a, um, a former police chief here in the city of Monterey Park that got paid over $370,000 in the payouts, which he accumulated throughout of his, all of his working uh, 
working time here. And I believe that it's not fair to the taxpayers. And I believe that uh, in, if an employee, if we negotiate something where if an employee does not use their benefits such as sick pay, vacation, or holiday pay within the two years, that their, that their uh, benefits evaporate. And cause, because I don't believe the value of their payouts would be the same as it is two years from today. And um, in, in, order to, in order to overcome that, I believe that we should all come together, the city and the taxpayers come to an agreement. Now, I can't give you a straight answer because I haven't sat down and spoke with the unions or the associations. I've only spoken with the fire, firemen association, but, but when I do get elected, when I do get elected, I mean, <laughs> um, I just hope that you can give me the support and I will do my best to work hard and negotiate something with the taxpayers and the city that we can all come to an agreement with the associations. And it says right here, how can I, we overcome the resistance from the employee associations? Well, I believe that it's shared sacrifice. I believe that we should all sacrifice, maybe possibly take a furlough schedule where someone, if an employee works 20 hours in the week, maybe take a day off. But in this budget crisis, something has to be done. And I believe that if nothing is done, we'll continue to dig ourselves deep in the hole. And that's my answer for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Leong. Well, this issue uh, regarding these big payouts has really kind of come to the forefront lately. Um, we have to understand also these contracts before were drafted during better economic times when we had higher property values, uh, more sales revenue. And one thing that disappoints me is that I don't think that we should vilify the staff that took these payouts, because they're not the ones that draft the contracts. <clears throat> we have to remember that the city council votes on these contracts, and they should take the responsibility for their decisions. In terms of uh, the, you know, working on changing contracts, we need to work with the unions and the associations to find the common ground so that we can match our current economic uh, climate. Um, some immediate actions that I thought of that we can take right away is to revisit the manager contracts and make necessary adjustments there to reflect our current economic climate. Some additional ideas, capping on the amount of uh, sick and vacation time that can be banked or accrued. Any amount over the cap could be paid out uh, in smaller increments in either monthly or annual so that there's not a large sum that, uh, that is ha has to be paid out at the end uh, during retirement. Excess hours may be applied to worker service credit so that they can uh, retire earlier like an example, let's say if you accrued 1,000 hours, that would equate to about a year more of service, just as an example. For LA County, uh, we only get to cash out half of our sick time when we retire. And for our vacation, we have caps. And if we go over the caps, then we're either encouraged to take the vacation or we'll have to buy it, um, we'll call it buyback, where we would cash it out on a regular basis. Another idea is that excess hours uh, over the cap can be placed into an employee sick fund to be used by employees that suffer long-term illnesses. In addition, in 1946 and again in 1952, the residents of Monterey Park voted to approve a special property tax to fund the city pension programs. That rate has remained at about nine cents per every hundred dollars in assessed property value. So if you had a property that was $100,000, you'd be paying $90 a year to fund the pension programs. Now that has been fixed since 1983 and as we all know, it's 2011, 28 years later. And, with, and you, we all know with, with inflation that things cost more than in the 80s. So this might be another area where we can examine and look into to find solutions for our pension issues. Thank you. Mr. Ng. It was approximately six months ago, if you watched the 60 Minutes on CBS, uh, they had a program that explained that 41 states out of the 50 states in the country have an unfunded liability regarding their pension. Meaning that out of 41 states, the amount of money that is needed to pay for all the employees' uh, retirement is running out of money. And that is also reflected in our city. When the Vanguardian Group of Glendale, which is a nonprofit entity, I believe, who went into our city clerk's office and obtained the figures of our employees through the Public Information Act. Uh, it was also written in the Passing Star News. The numbers were shocking. The former city manager cashed out $484,000 worth of unused time off when he left the city. 
Our past police chief received 372,000 payoff prior to his retirement. There is 10 of the city's most senior employees are sitting on $1.5 million in unused time off that is due, that is due when, when they retire. Immediate action is required. We need to take a look at vacation time and we need to cap it. Uh, currently, uh, we need to reduce our vacation cap from 400 to a number that the city can afford. Sick leave right now is currently has no cap and we're looking at capping those figures immediately. Also reducing administrative hours because right now it can be carried over to the following year. All of this needs to be addressed because the city is running out of money and I hate to be the bearer of bad news is we have to make decisions quickly and that's what I've been asking the city staff to quickly come up with some solutions so we can sit down. I understand what is being vested currently with the employees cannot be changed according not only to our city attorney but many attorneys that I've talked to throughout the state. What we can do is a two-tiered system for new employees coming in that is that will eventually save the city money in the long term. But these things have to be addressed and it has to be a priority for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jin. You know, many of these issues, I understand, has to be negotiated with the unions. And for administrators, it depends on how the city uh, manager write those contracts. You know, the other direction of the city council. Mr. Um, Jin, could you please speak a little more into Oh, I'm sorry. Many of these issues have to be negotiated with the unions and, and for administrators, it will be up to the city manager as to how those contracts are written. The city council would have to determine as a, as a council on the direction of negotiation. It also needs to be a collaborative effort with the union administrator. In our school district, we, many years ago, we, we cut off the uh, health, uh, lifetime health, health benefit back in 1987. So only it's, uh, if you're not hired before then, then you would not have any uh, lifetime benefits. We also told all our administrators that you, if you have vacation pay, you, lose, you can use it or you lose it. We also want to see that the other avenues that you can look at is vacation pay, uh, which is vacation pay and illness pay, that how much can be accumulated to, towards your retirement. And understand that many of these ideas that are coming across also has to be negotiated with the unions. You know, I have, I have dealt with the unions for the last eight years, being on the Board of Education. <laughs> and I always explain our position and the effect it may have on our budget. And it usually, it doesn't work, but you know, I, I bear with it and continue to express our thoughts and how by doing these cutbacks that it will save jobs and, and positions in our school district. I like to do the same thing here on, on the city council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Estrada. Thank you. This is an excellent question and I'll tell you why. It's an excellent question because it's affecting every local government agency whether it's a municipal government or a state entity or another government entity uh, under our, our, federal, our federal government. But this is a really good question, and it's a good question because it's asking you how would you reverse it. First of all, let's acknowledge that the fire and police are the vital link and, and the vital services to our city because they, they provide that public safety and they come to your home when you dial 911. When you have a med medical emergency, they come to your house. So it's very important that we acknowledge the vital services for, every, for, for, our, for our beautiful city of Monterey Park. Now let's look at how we can fix this. How can we, how, how can we reverse this? Well, I'm gonna tell you that actually you can't, and I'll tell you why. You can't reverse it because these are contracts that have already been negotiated years ago. Back in the 1990s when we had the dot-com boom and the housing market was very high, as it was even a, more than five years ago, you know, a lot of the government entities were giving away a lot of taxpayer money through pensions, through unlimited sick and vacation time, but I'll tell you what, that's your money and that's my money. That's money for, that, I, that I usually put food on the table for our family. So that's our tax dollars. What we need to do from this point forward is make sure that we correct the problem. And I'll tell you how we can correct the problem. As your councilman, this is what we'll do. We'll make sure that new employees coming in will be vested after five years. We're not going to be paying into a, a pension fund until they've been here five years. First of all, they would have to pass a probationary period, and then after that five years, they would, they can, they'll be vested. Uh, which means that after their retirement age, we would be entitled to a pension. 
But let me tell you about this economy, how hard it's hit us. This is a government's budget proposal. On page 12, it addresses school districts. And I'm going to share this with you because it, it's addressing every government entity as well as Monterey Park. Now, on page 12, it says, as painful as it may seem, as painful as it has been, it will continue to be, districts will need to reduce personnel. The second paragraph on there makes a reference and says the statutory timelines don't allow for a wait and see approach. In other words, we can't say, let's wait for the next uh, fiscal interim, the next fiscal quarter, and see if the revenues get any better while well, they're not. So we need to have a better approach, and this is the way we'll approach it. We'll make sure that they're vested after five years. We'll make sure that we put a cap on their vacation and their sick time. You know, the benefits that our same employees receive are far better than the ones you and I get. You know, my wife was laid off. She started working for another company, and as soon as she was there, they cut her pay by 40%. So now she's with a different company. The economy is bad. So in order, in order for us to address this, we want to make sure, uh, once again, that we negotiate the future contracts more responsibly. This is our tax dollars, and we want to make sure that we, don't, we put a cap on that sick and, uh, sick and vacation time. Thank you. Mr. Avila. Hello out there. As, as contracts, contracts stand, they are signed for a reason. So let them stand. Monterey Park is a great place to live. I don't want to change nothing. The people that live here love this city. The Monterey Park Police Department, Fire Department do a great job. Don't want to change nothing. Our, our city, not too long ago, was voted one of the best places to raise a family. That's great. You know, I grew up here in Monterey Park. I can agree with that. It's a great place. We need to just keep that standing. The whole California Monterey Park was voted the best place to raise a family. That's great. Let's keep that. We need to make new jobs. Yes, let's sell water. Instead of Arrowhead, put Monterey Park water. 13 working water wells in Monterey Park. Endless supply of water. We have a People need water. Let's put it out there, make money. Let's take care of our money needs. I'm a simple man. I just want to do what the simple people need. I'm out there and helping people. I'm the handyman Joe. I'm out there talking to our, our neighbors and friends and family out there. Street sweeping signs. They get, we get taxed on that big time. Those signs need to come down. Forty years ago, when I seen the street sweeping machine come down, they went around our our cars and everything. It just leaves a six-foot mud streak in front of my house. And my neighbors, if there's trash or anything in there, they go out there and sweep it because we take care of our city. You know? We can eliminate the street sweeping signs. We need to eliminate jobs out there that are just useless and put it back in the, in the city funds to take care of these so-called problems. <sighs> Vote for me. I'm a simple man. Handyman Joe. The handyman. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Question number two. The Atlantic Times Square project has been constructed and partially occupied. But yet again, the developers overpromised. The Garvey Garfield project seems to have stalled. What would you do in your term on the city council to ensure that the Garvey Garfield project progresses and both of these projects comply with the original promises of having national name brand stores and restaurants. Let's begin with uh, Mr. Ng and work our way to the left. Probably for over 20 years when developers have come before the city council, uh, they've always promised national retail stores, but unfortunately, <clears throat> they don't deliver. Uh, when Atlantic Times Square was uh, presented, I remember sitting in the audience and watching the presentation that the developer promised AT&T and Verizon as a national retail store. Well, to me, the residents are not, ex are not wanting an AT&T store as their national retail store. When you look at what is happening on Garfield and Garvey, uh, the truth is the developer uh, was seeking uh, financing for his project. Uh, currently, they are in the talks with a group from overseas, from China. And I had an opportunity to sit down with this potential investor who told me that through a translator, he was interested in purchasing several blocks of Monterey Park, including Lincoln Hotel 
and the kitty quarter where Mandarin Realty is. To be honest, I don't think a national retail store is coming because if you look at the design of that project, it's not going to entice a national retail store. If you look at the history of development in the city, you have to ask a developer and look at his history. Does he have a history of bringing national retail stores? Does he have the connection and the ability to attract national retail stores? If you look at the investment of a group that has no interest except to make money in the city, uh, that has no connection with national retail stores, I have to say that I don't believe that this project is going to have national retail stores. Until I see national retail stores, I will commend the developer. But at this time, um, I, I do not. And why it's important to have national retail stores is I know that there are residents in the city who, who have told me they lived here for over 50 years but have never shopped on Garvey Avenue. It's because our city caters to an ethnic group, a certain ethnic group. Why we need uh, variety is it's the economic future of the city. The city is going to run out of money. And for, for us to only cater to one segment and predominantly restaurants is going to be our demise. I encourage uh, the community to put pressure and request from their city council and their elected official that we do need national retail stores for the future of this city economically. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Leong. Well, first of all, I'd want to ask and uh, find out why it's stalling. Is it because of the economic climate? Uh, can the developers not secure their financing? Um, is it because contracts are unclear? I think that we need to ensure that the contracts that we have with the developers are clear and concise and that it leaves little room for interpretation. When we talk about national chain stores, you know, that's a very vague term. You know, a 7-Eleven is a national chain store. You know, a 99 cent store is a national chain store. So I think that in terms of contracts with our developers, we need to be clear and concise, and we need to be willing to enforce the agreements that we have in the contracts. If they're unable to, develop, uh, to deliver what they promise, then we should be willing to take legal action to file lawsuits against them for not develop, uh, delivering what they state that they will deliver in the cont on contracts. In the future, I think in terms of developers, we should find developers that have a track record for developing, uh, na uh, making developments that have national uh, chain stores in them, uh, developers that already have relationships with national chain stores. I think also in terms of the difficulties of getting national chain stores in is because there's a preconception that our neighborhood is a certain demographic. And that may be true maybe three, four, or five generations ago, but now in Monterey Park, we have second, third, fourth generations that have grown up in the city. So I think actually, um, you know, the current, the, the studies that they may have looked at before don't actually actu accurately reflect the current demographic in Monterey Park. We may also look into a way to have uh, resident surveys where we're actually going to the people and finding out what specific national chains are you looking to have in the city. And with those studies, we can use that to present it to the national chains and to, to illustrate to them that we do have a, a need and we do have a resident population that is requesting to have these stores and to shop in these stores. So those are some of my uh, opinions regarding how to continue to bring the national chain stores into Monterey Park. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sarnoy. You know, I love the idea that there are three redevelopment projects here in the city of Monterey Park, which includes the Atlantic Times Square, uh, the Garvey Garvey Project, which is the, the um, town center, and the marketplace by the 60 Freeway. I love that idea. But at the same time, um, I spoke with the city manager last week, and I sat down with them and speaking about what national retailers would be here. And, uh, and it's kind of up in the air because they certainly want to cater to a certain um, demographics, but I believe that if a national chain store locates here, such as a, a Target or something national that I think we should leave it up, it's not up to me, but we should leave it up to the taxpayers because if we leave a survey or we have an option from the 
from the developer and the consultant as to which retailers can locate here, we should give them the, the residents the option of which do they prefer. And through the survey, we'll know what, what, what they would want and what services and goods they would like to have here in, in the um, redevelopment projects. But um, I believe it's a great thing for the national retailers to locate here. here. Not only does it give, give them a competitive edge, but it also brings a new good and service to the residents here, which can add to their lifestyle, add value to their lives. And, uh, and as you know, I believe that the CRA would play a big part in this, but recently the governor just uh, uh, intended that he wants to stop all the CRA funds from the community redevelopment agencies. To, he wants to abolish that. And if I were elected, or actually when I'm elected, I will do my best to fight hard and petition that to go and to fight the governor from abolishing the CRA funds from developing, redeveloping our redevelopment projects here. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Riel Sebastian. Yes, thank you. First of all, I don't have any conflicts of interest in either of these developments, so I would be able to fully participate. As a matter of fact, last year I was approached to obtain financing for the Garfield Garvey project. And I gave up that work because I did not want any conflict of interest to interfere with my participation as a commissioner on the Economic Development Advisory Commission. You see, we have certain obstacles here in Monterey Park that other cities don't. We're not a planned community. We're not like Irwindale or Rancho Cucamonga. Over the years, our lots have been divided into smaller and smaller lots. And what happens? The square footage needs of retailers are not met. We also have higher land and higher development acquisition costs for, our, for the property here in Monterey Park. You all know that. Look at how high the property values are on our homes. The economics of today also play a factor. Tenants cannot afford the rents that developers need in order to stay out of the red. It's just because of the economy. The property must be suitable for the tenant. For example, Starbucks nowadays is looking to drive-through service because they realize that a drive-through is going to produce more income for them. Monterey Park does not have vacant land readily available in the proper size and configuration that these retailers need. We are addressing that in the Economic Development Advisory Commission as we address and revise the general plan for our city. Now, the city does need to coordinate its efforts with developers to attract national tenant, but so far those efforts have been limited. One good piece of news that I found out with respect to the Garfield, Gar Garfi, excuse me, Garfield Garvey project is that it is my understanding a letter of intent was signed with Fresh and Easy. I will diligently enforce the terms of a contract. For example, I reviewed the development agreement that we have with the Atlantic Times Square. Actually, I would have drafted that agreement differently. I would have looked for city council, outside city council that is well versed in developments, well versed in bringing national tenants to us. You see, what you define in the contract is what you get. Again, as our city becomes more and more progressive, it is very important that we have a city council that can identify and address these issues. These issues are related to business, legal, and financial matters. With my business, legal, and commercial real estate background, I will address, identify, and solve these problems for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Both the Electric Times Square project and the Garfield Garfield uh, Town Center project were approved about six, seven years ago before I was elected. I understand that the Atlantic Times Square consists of about 205,000 square feet total. The, six, uh, the AMC Theater occupies about 69,000 square feet, and the 24-hour fitness occupies 30,000 square feet. So the remaining 205,000, uh, 105,000 square feet are divided into uh, stores that they are renting to like Ketan Sushi, which is a, a chain store. They have about 300 some more uh, stores throughout the United States. And also a Phoenix restaurant, uh, Lee Sandwich, those are, we call regional stores. 
The national store will only come when they see there is a market there for them, can stay business to make a profit. So in order to attract national stores, we have to prepare ourselves. First of all, for example, for the town center at Garfield and Garfield, I've been talking to our city manager to upgrade the downtown business area by putting product plans and also paint the exteriors of all the stores, uh, shops in that area on Garvey between Nicholson and Ramona, and also uh, have the business operators to put awnings, and make it present and attractive so that when the Garvey Garfield Town Center project start to build, and the national store will see it. But however, I agree with Council Member in that because of the uh, the plan and also the architectural plan, the location limited by the parking spaces and so forth, uh, I don't think we can attract uh, a lot of national store there. The requirement is they have to have 51% national stores. The only areas that I can see that we can bring in national stores is the OII site, the, uh, the marketplace. So we have to look at marketplace. But now we are talking about the town center and the Atlantic Times Square. I have a chance to, a chance to talk to the developer recently. Uh, because of the financial situation, they are not getting any loan, but they are coming up with the hard cash to uh, build this project, and they plan to break uh, ground in a few months. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mr. Avila. Yes. Uh, so national chain restaurants and all that stuff, I don't want them here. It brings more crime, more people to scope out your homes when they're cruising looking for the place. Don't need that here. Marner Park has enough tough enough, job, tough enough job keeping our city safe, and they do a hell of a job doing that, and I commend them. I don't want that to change. The restaurants down in downtown Monterey Park, the best food, best Chinese food you can get anywhere. People know that. Every time we have a gathering and we want Chinese food or something, we order from downtown. Those chefs down there are great. We don't need those national. People bought their homes here a long time ago and still buy them today. Ain't because of national chain places they go shop, because of the safeness and the raise a family. Don't want to pollute our city with that. I just want to keep it the way it is. Monterey Park's doing something right, and I don't want changes. Just want to enforce it. And the Lord be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Estrada. Thank you. What would I do as your councilman to make sure that the development at Garvey and Garfield comes through, comes to fruition, and provides those national recognized stores so that we produce that sales tax revenue to support our city services? Well, let me tell you that as a planning commissioner uh, for our city at this time, we have agenda items that are land use issues. We have agenda items that are uh, residential. There, there's agenda items where people want to make a small parcel and build a large mansion in a, in a neighborhood that has been uh, nice and quiet for the last 50 years. But we're seeing changes in our city, but the changes aren't the changes that are going to keep our city um, out of the, out of the uh, in, in the negative. So what we really need to do is we need to realize one thing. First, I wanted to make sure that that developer uh, has a mutual agreement with the city of Monterey Park. We want to make sure that the developer, first of all, is paying livable wages. We want to make sure that that developer also um, brings in those nation, national recognized stores. Because let me tell you that the, that the Atlanta Times Square, as a planning commissioner uh, serving, serving all of us here in Monterey Park, I'm going to tell you that it's a disappointment, and I'll tell you why. We were told that we were going to get national recognized stores. We need to support the restaurants that we already have in our city. And I'll tell you that my wife and the kids, we, we eat at two of them here on Garvey that we really like. But we need to support what's already here. What we need to have in the Atlanta Times Square, what we should have had, we should have had a Chili's restaurant. We should have had a Gap store. We had, should have had an Old Navy. And I'll tell you why. People that come from outside the city, it would entice them to come in, come in and spend their tax dollars here in Monterey Park. So we need to correct from this point forward we need to make sure that any future developments that we have a mutual agreement with the developer. Now, I'm going to disagree with a comment that was made earlier about how developers, um, developers, they, they're, not, they're not coming into the city or, or they're not delivering. Well, I'll tell you that they are delivering because I drive to other cities when I shop, like many of you, and they are delivering. Go to Burbank 
go to Temecula, go to some of these other cities. But let's realize one thing also with the city of Monterey Park as a planning commissioner. Monterey Park is not a planned community. Monterey Park, most of its homes were built in the 1940s, post-World War II track homes. So it's a high dense city. The question should be, what do we do with the space that we have now? So as your future councilman, what I would do is I would make sure that we're sensitive to the needs of the community, we have a balanced community, we have a balanced representation on the city council, and that we make sure that we rezone some of these areas like on Potrero Grande. You know, Potrero Grande, I'll tell you, we have over 4,000 employees that come and work there. But yet when they go eat, they go eat on Via Campo. So all that money stays in Montebello. We need to make sure that we keep the, the money here. And then the last thing uh, that we want to make sure is that we want to make sure that we have that mutual, devel develop, uh, mutual agreement with that developer and that it comes to fruition. Thank you, Mr. Jin. Well, I always know that we need to work with the developers, developers to ensure that the projects are built in a timely manner. You know, we looked at the Land Square project. For 20 years, it sat empty. We need to make sure that our city moves forward on getting these developments. I don't know the, the contracts, agreements between the city and the developers, but I think that we should hold our developers to those contracts. It's a tough time. It's, it's a tough time, and I always hear for back since 1974 that we could have had our, our, the first mall in, in, the, in this city or by Atlantic Square, but it was uh, put back by the, uh, the merchants over there. You know, we could also, you always think about bringing uh, national stores here. The bottom line is do national stores want to come here? Um, you know, you, and look at the development now. Is it, is it affordable to these um, to these uh, retail retailers that want to come in. I know I hear the prices are, are, are quite high, and I think the ne city needs to work with the developer to make sure that the leases are affordable for our new our retailers and allow them to come here to, to set up shops and to see that this is a wonderful city. I know that we need to also change the image of our city of being one-dimensional. We need to make sure that, our, that it's, we can express that we, the citizens, would like to have more uh, national retail stores or stores that we like to, uh, to, to, uh, to shop at. You know, and another thing is that I find in the city of Alhambra, uh, talking to some the, the uh, city manager there, and one time he says, you know what, we, we find developers that will fit our city, that will work with the city, and that's really important, not just to give a, a blanket policy to them. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our last prepared question, question number three. The city of Azusa recently finished a one block Target store project based on first floor parking, second floor store as opposed to the dungeon like underground parking with stores on the first and second floors. Would this concept be applicable in Monterey Park? Do you have any specific projects or sites in mind? Let's begin with Mr. Um, Sarnoy and move to our left. The project I do believe is applicable. Um, as opposed to a dungeon-like underground, a dungeon-like underground parking with the stores on the first and the second floors, well, I don't think the, the word dungeon kind of sounds mysterious, and if we were to open up a dungeon-like store, I feel that I wouldn't be attracted to it either. But I do like the idea of the first floor, second floor store park, uh, second floor store, and with the projects in mind, I believe it's applicable um, at the project and possibility at the marketplace. But at the same time, our city uh, many years ago did put from the research I've done, the city did put an ordinance uh, on the height limit of how high the buildings can go. If we leave it up to the voters, I believe if we leave this up to the voters on a ballot measure where they can increase the height limit, I believe right now the height limit for, uh, the highest height limit allowed right now is 130 feet, and that's if the buildings are constructed within 200 feet of Hellman, and if, if, 
the residents, if we leave it up to the residents on a ballot where they can increase the height limit at a specific height, pro at a specific redevelopment project, maybe at the marketplace or in Garvey Garfield, then I do believe that the target would like to relocate here because as I spoke with the city manager last week, he said the only reason, some of the reasons why national retailers may not locate here, such as Target and Borders, is because of the space requirement. Um, some of the stores require four cars per 1,000 square feet. And I believe that if I were elected, I wouldn't close them off. I wouldn't close off the retailers just because their re requirements don't meet ours. I, we would work with them. And I believe that we can do, also do a trade-off with, with, the, with the stores. And, and I believe this is great. This is a great uh, opportunity if a target were to be constructed here because we can construct sales revenue and also maybe some property tax. But it's a great idea, and it's up to the voters. And if we can increase the height limit here, then I believe the first floor parking and the second floor store is applicable here in the city of Monterey Park. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Riel Sebastian. Thank you. The concept of having a Monterey Park is not only applicable, it's welcomed and refreshing. And Azusa, just so you know, the target was constructed in that fashion because their lot was also small. They have the same issue that Monterey Park presently faces with a lot of its locations. Whether, the con whether that concept will work here depends on several factors. One of them is site location, density needs, cost, Port, proper traffic design and capacity to accommodate traffic condition. The other issue would be a planning issue as far as whether parking ratios are met. I do know that despite this economic downturn, Target is looking for new locations to expand. They have their new stores which carry groceries and they are looking. Do I have any specific projects in mind? I was thinking about the Garfield Garvey intersection, you know, the one we all know where they sell the Christmas trees. But again, the issue would be site location. Is it enough square footage for a target? And my other concern, deeper concern, would be traffic congestion, especially during rush peak hours. It does get pretty backed up there. The marketplace is another area I was thinking about. It has 40 plus acres, but if we plan on bringing quite a few big box uh, retail tenants there, we may also have an issue. My idea would be to have stacked parking, the same way that they have at the Santa Anita Mall. When you, I think it's right next to Macy's. They do have the stacked parking, so we wouldn't have a problem there as far as parking ratios. And that would also permit us more space to bring in more retailers, thereby increasing our property tax and our sales tax revenue. Of course, we would have to look at the other factors as well. Another issue would be, again, Monterey Park is not a planned community. We have to look at areas that accommodate the square footage required by the various tenants. These are all issues that are, keep, that are going to keep coming up over and over as Monterey Park progresses. And again, I am the only candidate here that has the commercial real estate background, the business background, the financial background, and the legal background to address, identify, and find solutions for these issues. I will be proactive and I will forge a relationship with the developers, with the retailers. And I will make sure that we have a mutual understanding of each other's expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Uh, City of Montreal Park definitely need more parking spaces. Uh, recently, I've been talking to our city manager and how we can increase our parking spaces provide for the stores that are located in the downtown area. Uh, the only uh, location that we can see is the vacant lot that city owned at the corner of Garvey and Lincoln. And what we should do is we build uh, two, three-story parking structures. And also with the ground floor, uh, provide for the tourist bus uh, to accommodate the passengers, even have booth there servicing uh, the tourists. One location that one site I would feel that uh, is ideal to build uh, like factory outlet 
type of stores is Monterey Pass Roads. I go to Citadel uh, outlet to shop all the time. I can see that if we can expand our commercial area to Monterey Pass Road, one side of the street will be all stores. The other side of the street will be all parking spaces so that residents of Monterey Park can shop our needs in that area, Monterey Pass Road, without going out of the city. And tourists, when they come from all over the world, from Canada, Australia, New York, Hawaii, Chicago, Florida, they are tourists coming from all those areas. Why? Because Monterey Park is very centrally located. They stay here, they go to Disney World, they go to Las Vegas, they go to Yosemite, Yellowstone, etc. And I've been talking to travel agencies. One travel agency alone brought in reserving 50,000 rooms in a year, last year. And they would like to bring as many to Monterey Park as possible. So if we can have that kind of shopping area for local residents, for the tourists, and it will be very beneficial for the city of Monterey Park to increase our tax revenue so that we will have adequate fund to provide the best kind of public safety service to our residents. So I believe that if we can well use Monterey Pass Road, and that will be a very good, uh, successful uh, project for the future of Monterey Park. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Avila. Hello. Again. As for um, parking space or target or national cha chains, um, putting a parking space out in Monterey Park, mm -hmm. I don't care for it. I don't, we don't need cha national recognition. We already have it. People want to come to Martin Park because we're already Vila, on Walmart. Could you sit down, please? Yes, ma'am. I think everyone can see you. We don't need the outside chains. Martin Park is already famous as it is. We already made a name on the planet. Martin Park's famous for the because we are well known because our families raised here are great. We put out children that are in our society today doing well. We don't need the outside influences. Monterey Park needs to stay the way it is. We're already great. I don't want to change nothing. I just want to enforce the laws that are already here. There are some that need to be changed that are no good. I'll deal with them. Monterey Park's great. Just give me a chance to make it, make your vote and make me the person that needs to stand up for us. I'm bold. I ain't afraid. I'll handle it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Estrada. Thank you. The question is, would this, would this concept be applicable to Monterey Park? Well, let me tell you that, first of all, it has to be a collective agreement between the developer and the city of Monterey Park. And then we also need that public input from all of you the residents as well as myself. Let me also tell you that if it makes sense, if it makes sense and meets the environmental needs that are both the state and federal laws, then if we can comply and it makes sense, then I think we should move, be able to move forward, with it, move forward with it. It is applicable if we meet those regulations and we comply with the federal and state uh, mandates. And I'll tell you that the more you build, the more density you have. And one concern that's really a big concern of mine is actually the welfare of my community. You know, the more density you have, the more pollution that you have, the more carbon monoxide, the more toxins that you're breathing, that you're not breathing, that is actually being a hazard to our health. Just like, let's say, like a cell tower that, that, that they try to build here in our city that I oppose as a planning commissioner. But let me tell you, in terms of the concept, what, what specific project would I have in mind? Well, let me tell you, as a planning commissioner, I'm very in tune, I'm very knowledgeable of our parcels. Having served as a reserve firefighter in the past, I'm very familiar with the topography and the layout of our city. We have, a, we have a high density in Monterey Park. Monterey Park is, for the most part, it's a bedroom community with a lot of hills. And so our commercial and retail space is very limited. So we need to maximize with what we do have. I'll tell you what the vision I have for our city. Currently, as a planning commissioner, um, I voted against building a fire station at Potrero and Marklin. And the only reason for that is because that's a key location 
that's a key location for an In-N-Out Burger, and that's something I would like to push for. Bringing in something like an In-N-Out Burger can be an attraction for other chain stores to see that Monterey Park is moving in a positive direction, that they are making the change, that they are providing those national name brand stores and eating establishments that you and I can have like we had in the 1980s when my parents would shop here. So the other thing, the other vision that I would have is actually the marketplace. The marketplace that has been, that we've been working on for the last 12 years. For the last 12 years, we've been working on the marketplace. And finally, we have a developer, but we still have some obstacles. And those obstacles could be, can be overcome. But the main thing we need to have is we need to have a collective agreement with that developer. We want to make sure that we have that commitment. The other things I would like to do is actually modify our, our general plan. Every city has a general plan in terms of the direction of the city, not only for development, not only for the growth of the city, but also for the, the plan welfare and the, and the services that that city provides. So one thing I would like to do is, for example, at Reagan and Garfield, where they have a Dollar Tree, once that lease runs out, we should be able to get a, a Trader Joe's in there. Let me tell you about Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's moving to our community, and I live in South Monterey Park. Trader Joe's coming into our community would actually attract more people driving to and from work, driving to downtown LA. Trader Joe's has a two-story in Pasadena. They have small lots. They only sell 4,000 items, but, but every quarter they make millions of dollars in profits. Those sales tax is what we need. So we want to make sure that we move in a positive direction and provide those national name brand stores. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jin. You know, in answering that question, I think it really, it depends on the, what kind of uh, atmosphere we want for our city and how we want the pedestrians to, to pedestrian walkways to flow. If we want more people to walk beyond our streets and, and, and create um, retail stores there, it may, it may not work as well. I mean, this is a, they're talking about a target that's one block long and it's huge. You know, in San Francisco, I was up there a couple of times when my daughter was going to school and I've seen stores that were built and on a little bit higher level, but they built the garage, the garages on top and to provide more parking for their facility. Because if you've ever been to San Francisco, the, the uh, they don't provide as much land, but they built a whole supermarket and built two, two story, two or three story uh, parking lot structure for, for for the store and and for the community, and it really worked really well. And but you know it really depends how we how we're looking at it, how we look at our master plan, how we perceive that we look in our city, and how would that would work. Like I said, it depends what kind of a traffic we want to create and what kind of atmosphere we want to create in those area. I think that's very important. You know, working, having the planning commission looking at reviewing the whole master plan for our, our city. Does this concept work? You know what, I, we're, I'm pretty open to a lot of new ideas and innovative ideas that, that help, would help bring more foot traffic into our city. Everybody's right, we need more parking. That's the biggest problem for the last 50 years since I've, I've lived here. And there's everything, every time we complain about it, there's nothing's done. Every time we work with developers, developers get a variance or, and there's no extra parking space. And that's the problem because we have all this pollution. People are driving around looking for parking spaces. So I hope that we, by being on the city council, that we, we can find a solution to those problems. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ng. You know, seven years ago when I worked at Wells Fargo Bank as their commercial banker, I was assigned to 12 cities, and Azusa was one of them, besides Pasadena, Monrovia, and Glendora, and the surrounding cities. Uh, Azusa uh, accomplished this in building a target that's on 809 North Azusa Avenue, which I'm quite familiar with their downtown area. Uh, they actually, the store uh, is 159,000 square feet, and on the first floor, it holds 400 parking spaces and employs 225 uh, people in the community. Uh, this is a great addition for Azusa, and they call it uh, basically an urban style target. Now the question is, do we have any uh, areas in the city where we can have this type of development? If you're looking at the city, uh, there is four acres, actually it's seven acres, but four acres are usable up in Corporate Center Drive. Besides the city-owned uh, seven acres. Adjacent to it is another se seven acres that's owned by, I believe, a conglomerate uh, in Mexico. Uh, but that would be an interesting site. 
Uh, what was interesting about it also 10 years ago when I brought it up to the attention of the city council is before um, Camino Real uh, Chevrolet used to park their vehicles there and I had asked the city manager if I can take a look at that contract and he asked me why and I said because I want to read it. Um, to my surprise we were leasing that piece of property the seven acres for one dollar a month and I and I kept that agreement and I came before the city council as a city treasurer and I reprimanded the staff for even coming up with this agreement because the legal fees of just putting this contract together obviously is a lot more than one dollar a month. Um, so the vehicles were eventually moved from that facility. Uh, but it currently remains empty. The city owns it. And this was an interesting question because I think if there is a target uh, that can build this urban style structure, it would be Corporate Center Drive. I know there's a developer who's looking into possibly building a hotel there, and his plans is also to build a con uh, concert hall uh, up there in Corporate Center Drive. But either way, I think it's a prime location, especially since Monterey Park has all the views. And if you ever go up there, um, it's a spectacular view of the San Gabriel Mountains. And that would be my answer, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Leong. In addressing the uh, third question here, uh, given the limited space that we have here in Monterey Park, I think it's important that we are open to all different options. I think the concept of the first floor parking, second floor store, that's a, not a bad idea, but given the limited space, it's hard to find locations where we could actually do that. And I believe there is, uh, are our current ordinances and building codes that limit the height of how far we can build up. Now, in regards to the the, the comment as, as listed in the uh, question with the dungeon-like parking, um, if, if people don't like that because it has a feeling that it's like confining, perhaps there are ways that we can um, build it or decorate it in a way that creates a less uh, dungeon-like appearance and maybe perhaps have marquees or advertisements that are on the walls so it doesn't feel quite as confined. Um, it is cheaper to build from the ground up because you don't have to dig the hole, but given the limited space, I think that we can't eliminate the underground parking option uh, completely. So while uh, I do support you know, new ideas, I think really in terms of sites that would be able to accommodate a first floor parking, second floor store would be the marketplace. And uh, perhaps Atlantic and, and Garvey but uh, if we do that on the corner there, then it would be limited to only a few stores. You wouldn't be able to put a Target or any big chain there. So although you know, some people are unhappy about the dungeon-like parking, I think that if we can work to create it to feel less dungeon-like, I think that it would serve our needs and we'd be able to also be able to have parking underground and still have our stores. So we need to be open to every option considering the fact that we have such limited space here in Monterey Park. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That is the end of the prepared questions. I'd like to thank the candidates for the work that they did in preparing their answers, and um, they were some uh, very good points made. At this time, we'll take a 10-minute break. If you have questions that you would like to pose to the candidates, please see that uh, Maureen, who's standing up there in the back, or Sandy, who's in the uh, back room, or one of the women up here at the front table, get your questions. And we will try to start promptly at 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, so that uh, we can get as many questions as possible. Thank you. Okay, I see all the candidates have returned. Uh, we have a number of interesting questions. We will try to get through as many of them as uh, we can. And I'm going to begin with this question for everyone. And we will start with uh, Mr. Leong and work to our right. We've spent some time this evening talking about uh, redevelopment issues in uh, Monterey Park. Um, what is another major issue that you think is uh, facing 
the city at this point in time, and how would you help remedy that uh, situation? Well, I could talk, uh, one of the major problems that I see is that uh, we need to have more harmony in our council. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, watching the meetings, a lot of times I'm unhappy with a lot of the discourse that's going on. And I think that, I think that what I could do immediately is to be able to bring some balance and be able to maintain our focus on what we're supposed to be doing and not on things that really are of no consequence. Thank you. Mr. Ng. I think redevelopment is going to be one of the, the largest issues that faces the city because it's going to determine our, our fiscal future. Uh, when you look, for example, at a project like Atlantic Times Square, um, now the actual structure is impressive. But what you're seeing inside and the tenants that are being relocated, um, some of them are relocating from across the street. There's a super bookstore that relocated from the um, Atlantic Garvey uh, location to across the street. And it doesn't add to the revenues that we need in the city. For a development to just take tenants and cannibalize another building in the city isn't going to help the city. Uh, I even brought up during the council meeting when my daughter at UCLA was going to bring her friends to see Harry Potter. I was shocked that Harry Potter wasn't even showing at our AMC in Monterey Park. In fact, Green Lantern, where my family is tonight, is watching it had to go to Alhambra to watch it. And why is that? Uh, we've been told that now there's a competitive zone with Renaissance Regal, and it's within five miles from our new AMC. So anything that has a 3D or an IMAX uh, type show will never be shown in our city. So in fact, we're like um, second class when it comes to uh, featured films. Uh, I have asked the city manager to look into this so we can write a letter to the corporate office of AMC demanding that, first of all, we're two separate cities and they're two separate uh, theaters and we sh in this community deserve the number one shows that are being shown. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Jin. I, I think one of our biggest issues is, is our city government and the infrastructure of our city government. I think we need to really get to settle and have our department heads in place and working with our city manager and the city council working together. Because if, if they're not working together, then we're not moving as a city. There's a lot of rhetoric going on, and I, th I feel that it needs to be stopped. We, we need to move on and move forward with the city. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Estrada. Thank you. You know, one of, the, one of the biggest problems that we have in our city, it's like a white elephant, and that's, that's a sustaining uh, pension deficit that we seem to be, that just seems to be getting bigger and bigger. This isn't only a, a local problem, this is a national problem. You know, the governor, our outgoing governor, Governor Schwarzenegger couldn't fix a problem. Our President Obama could, can't fix a problem with, with, with the economy. So one of the biggest problems we have here is how to tackle this growing pension deficit. We, you have employees retiring at the age of 50 and 55 when last year there was a report by the federal uh, health department stating that people are well living longer. They're living because of health and be, because of uh, longevity and, 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 and different, different modes that people are living. They're living healthier. People are living well into their 90s, but yet people are retiring at the age of 50. So one of the things that we need to address is we need to make sure that the future contracts, we have the employees pay more into their pension. We make sure that we cap the sick and vacation time. And I'll tell you why, because at the end of the road, at the end of that tunnel, you're going to have something positive. You're still going to have that city employee there. I want to make sure that as your councilman, we don't have any more furloughs. We don't have any more employees laid off. I want to make sure that we have that structure. Let me tell you what's going on with the furloughs and the employees that we laid off. We have people working from economic development, which they do land use issues. They moved them from one department because of layoffs and because of seniority rights and because of bargaining unit uh, agreements under the MOU. You have people working that had their talents in economic redevelopment when all they're working in human resources and now they're working in the city clerks. So we're having employees not deliver that caliber of service that we hired them to do, but yet we're paying them the salary. So we need to fix that. What's the second problem? The second problem is development. I already told you as a planning commissioner and as a resident, many of you agree. The Lion Times Square is a disappointment. We need to support the restaurants that we already have and we need to make sure that future development represents all the residents. 
the, the last problem that we have is actually the city employees. I want to make sure that we keep them on the payroll, but they need to make sure that they contribute more and make more concessions so that we can keep them uh, working here in our city and keep them out of the unemployment line. Thank you, Mr. Avila. Can you repeat the question once more? Um, what did I do with it? Uh, we've talked about finance uh, development uh, issues in Monterey Park. At this point in time, what do you think is another major um, pro a problem or issue in the city, and how would you help remedy the situation? Okay, major problem in the city, street sweeping signs. I keep on saying that because I do not like them. We keep getting taxed about that. It's like, it used to be $15 a, a ticket. Now it's like 50 bucks a ticket. We don't need to be taxing our people out there for those kind of problems that they shouldn't be there in the first place. Our city doesn't need no new taxes. It's fine the way it is. We just need to capitalize on fixing the problems that we have now and make them better. We need to be um, nationally recognized. We pretty much are. Well, maybe let's bring in like a Monterey Park Marathon or something. As for revenue, like I say, we, we have 13 working water wells. The space that's in Monterey Park, let's build a water company there, bottle the water, sell it all over the world. Well, we don't have money problems no more. I'm a simple man. Just vote Joe Avila. I'm the handyman. If you need help, I'll help you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. City of Monterey Park is known for business unfriendly. We have a new city manager now. Uh, he has a lot of development experience. I believe that all the council members should work together, plan a master development plan, identify which location is suitable for what kind of business so that we all agree, all of us will be, all the council members working together as a team to streamline the procedure, making sure that we will work with the staffs in the city and also the developers, the business people. And we have to work together as a team in a business manner. And we have to respect each other so that we can do whatever we need for the people of Monterey Park here. So that the goal is we make sure that the residents of city of Monterey Park will be able to, to live to work, to shop, to play within the city without going out to other city to shop our needs. I go out to, as I said, the city there to do shopping all the time. I go to Trader Joe at the corner of Rosemead and Huntington Drive or South Pasadena on Mission all the time. I don't want to see that. I want to make sure that we all work together in harmony and really focus on the city business working for the welfare of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Real Sebastian. Yeah, I think the major issue for our city is our budget. If we don't get that budget under wrap, nothing else will happen. Um, just to give you an idea, our city aims to keep a cushion of at least 10% of our annual operating budget. That cushion today is only $2.3 million. Bear in mind that the last fiscal year, 2009 to 2010, we had a shortfall of $3.6 million. That is more than our present cushion. Our general fund reserves went from $18.5 million to $13.8 million. It took us 10 years to increase those reserves by $4.5 million. And then it took us only two years to them to be depleted down to $4.7 million. Do you see the issue? Well, we can keep cutting and cutting and cutting, but that isn't going to fix it. So what will? It's great to bring in national retail tenants, but you know construction takes time. So I have a suggestion. I thought out of the box. My suggestion is shop Monterey Park first. When you make your, your list to go shopping on the weekend and you have the items that you need to purchase on your list, go through them and find out which stores here in Monterey Park carry those items and make it a point 
to go and buy them from Monterey Park. Look, we're all guilty from this. I too shop at Trader Joe's, Bed Bath Beyond, and Target. But now I am making a conscious effort to shop Monterey Park first. We have a lot of great stores here. And think of it, think of it this way. For every $100 you spend, the city will get 10 cents. Think of it. That's a rebate. That rebate can then be used to fix our potholes, to fix the leaky roof at Langley Center the next time it rains, and to help balance our budget. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sarnoy. I don't know. Other than our redevelopment projects and issues, I believe that one of our, our, our issues that we, we're facing right now is uh, is a transparency. I believe that there's a lot of residents here in the city of Monterey Park that are uninformed. And I believe that when I ask, not even as a, as a politician or even as a candidate of Monterey Park, I ask a resident, what do you want from a politician? What is it that you expect from a council member? And they're not really too sure of what they want, but what they do want is to be informed of what exactly is going on in the city. And I believe that and as part of my goals, and, and if when I get elected, is to bring transparency. And I want the resident of the Monterey Park to see what I see, because I think too many deals are uh, cut behind closed doors. And I believe that 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 the resident should know what I know, and that's what I should bring to the table. And I think we all, as council members, should bring to the table, and we should inform the resident everything on what's going on, because. You know, they go on their day-to-day -day lives on doing what they're supposed to do, but I believe it's our job to be a servant to the community and deliver to them on what's going on as a resident. But I also, another issue I also wanted to focus on was on the youth programs. As a youth mentor to the Youth Advisory Board, I, I believe that investing in our youth is a big, uh, is a big uh, issue too. It's a, I think we should because San Gabriel Valley, uh, Monterey Park in the San Gabriel Valley area is, has the lowest co crime rate. And I believe we should continue to invest in public safety, but without cutting services. And um, other than that being said, no, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for your answers. Our next question. <clears throat> uh, although this election in Monterey Park is nonpartisan, um, it, in recent uh, times, it cannot be denied that more and more people are in, interested in what their representatives are, are doing and what they stand for. Without stating your party affiliation, how would you characterize your political views? And let's start with Ms. Sebastiani and move to our left. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Riel Sebastian. Okay. Riel Sebastian. Oh, what did I say? Sebastiani. <laughs> oh, I'm, just, okay. I'm always giving people new That's names. Okay. Sorry. Um, well, the platform, as I mentioned, for my uh, running for city council has been, number one, transparency. You know, somebody asked me the other day, what do you see as more important than public safety? And I thought about it, and I thought, honesty and integrity. Because if we don't have honesty and integrity, everything else fails. If we don't have transparency, everything else fails. And through this campaigning, I have uh, come across quite a few issues regarding lack of transparency. And quite frankly, I am very disappointed. Without transparency, the whole foundation of what we believe in, regardless of our political affiliation, falls apart. The whole purpose in our democratic uh, system here, not only in Monterey Park, but in our, in our state, in our country, falls apart. So the best way to characterize what I am, who I am, what I believe in, is just look up the definition of transparency. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mr. Wong. Thanks to the previous council members and administration that built City of Monterey Park, known as one of the best cities in California to raise family and to raise kids. This is because of the hard work of all the staffs, 
the police officers, the fire firemen, all the people that the directors working together as a team to build what we have in Monterey Park. And I feel that as elected official, as a public servant, we have to respect each other. We have to appreciate what they have done for us. We have to continue to do our best to serve the needs of the people, putting all our personal differences aside. We have to focus on people business. And we have to care about each other, share, share kindness, share love, to work together as a family, and listen to everybody, their needs. This is the way I would expect. This is what I would like to do. My track record shows that I work with everybody. I respect everybody's opinion. This is the way to take care of the city business. This is the way to serve the people of Monterey Park. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Avila. Hello. The best way I put it is in a song. I Before you do that, would you check and make sure that the microphone is on? Yes, it is. Okay, I couldn't hear you. Okay. I ain't nothing but a simple old man. Call me the handyman, I reckon that I am, but there's things going on make me mad down to the core. Have to work like a dog to make ends meet. There's crooked politicians and crime in the street, and I'm madder than hell, and I don't want to take it no more. We tell our kids, just say no. Then some patty waste judge lets a drug dealer go, slaps him on the wrist, and he turns him back out on town. If I had my way with people selling dope, take a big tall tree and a short piece of rope, hang him up high, let him swing till the sun goes down. <laughs> if, <laughs> I, I ain't nothing but a simple old man. They call me the handyman, I reckon that I am. And I won't fail if you vote for me for city council here in Monterey Park. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Estrada. Thank you. What defines a person is their values, what they're taught by their parents, their upbringing, the type of environment they live in, how they prepare themselves as an adult, what they do in life and the goals they set up for themselves or when they fail and they get back up and they try again and they succeed. But let me tell you what defines me, and it's, you'll see it on, on our campaign lawn signs, and that is transparency. And let me add to that. I'll give you from experience serving as a Marine for our country, some of the 14 traits of, the, of, our, of our United States Marine Corps. Commitment, leadership, initiative, determination, teamwork. But overall, I'm a moderate. I'm an independent. Not as a political party, but ever since purchasing a home here in Monterey Park, raising my wife and my, raising my kids. You know, my daughter was born here in Monterey Park Hospital. All our three kids were born here in the city. They're raised here, they go to the public schools. So what defines Luis Estrada? I'll tell you what defines Luis Estrada, is family and commitment to serving you as a humble servant. <clears throat> now, I'll tell you that the other thing that defines me is I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a husband. But for the most part, I value over, after losing my father when I was 10, I learned at an early life that <clears throat> serving my community is actually the best thing that I can do. It's what I feel comfortable in. I feel comfortable in my own skin because I'm helping my fellow neighbor. Not, not as a public servant, or, but actually I think as a good Christian and, and as a good person. Now I'll tell you that the other things that I've been doing that very define me as a citizen is serving all of you as a firefighter. So when you call 911 in the 90s, or so, or a few years ago, I, came, I probably came to your house when you called 911 as a firefighter. Or I, I, we made sure that we took you to the hospital to make sure that you get that, that emergency care. So the only thing that defines me, it, it defines me is actually my civic involvement in our city. I serve as a board member for the St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic School Board to make sure that the direction of our kids and we have that, that faith and that religion to make sure that we have positive agreeing for our children. I serve as your traffic commissioner here in Monterey Park. Thank you, Mr. Jin. Time's up. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I complained at the wrong person. Mr. Jin, your turn. Well, I'm a family man, and I'm a grandfather, and, it's, and I always believe in family. I can teach my kids good moral values, and 
uh, I go to church and work in my church and uh, a big part of my church. It's a big part of my life. But my life has always been helping other people, extending a, a helping hand to those who need help, um, always looking to support other people and or, other organizations uh, for what they believe in and what I believe in. You know, I always like to teach kids about being a volunteer in, in, the, in the city to, to give back a little bit to, of their time of what the city is giving, giving them. And also being a, an accountable, accountable to, to my family, to my church, to this city, to my school board. I think that's very important. I don't violate my integrity. And that's very important to me as a, as a person. You know, on the, on the school board, it's, it's been a life learning uh, experience. Um, and one of my motto is that I always believe in is being cost effective and cost efficient. And that's important to, to anything that we do in life. So, but that defines me as a person. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ng. I just want you to know that um, I'm 47, uh, but I was born in Canada, and the city is Regina. It's the home of uh, where the late comedic actor Leslie Nelson was born, also where Ark Linkletter grew up. Um, the reason why I share this is uh, it's also the home where the birthplace of universal health care in Canada. Um, Tommy Douglas, who actually was born in my city, uh, became a politician after World War II. Uh, but as a youngster, he had an infection in his leg, and they were about to amputate it. But another set of doctors wanted to take a look at it for free. And in doing so, they saved the child's leg. Tommy Douglas, when he became an adult and a politician, said, I want that free advice to everybody in Canada. Uh, Tommy Douglas happens to be the, grand, the grandfather of Keith Sutherland, the actor on 24, and Don, Donald Sutherland's father-in-law. The reason why I share this is because my sister, um, who's 50 years old, has a dis blood disorder called thalassemia, where since she was an infant, she receives an eight-hour blood transfusion every single month. And now she's 50. In fact, the hematologist that I spoke to just recently said, I believe your sister is probably the longest living survivor of thalassemia. Because according to medical books, uh, my sister should have died at age 13. Now, the reason why I share this is because I understand what and how people such as nurses and doctors have taken care of my sister. In fact, uh, they're the second family for my sister who has taken care of her for 50 years now. I'm a family person, but I also know and I'm sensitive to people in need. I'm a moderate. I believe there's a lot of people in our um, country who's, who's more of a moderate than the two extremes. Um, I look at a person's character, and I look at uh, the person's honesty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Leong. In regards to my personal philosophy, uh, without giving any uh, party definition, uh, I believe in collaboration. I believe that no one person is more important than another. I believe that we can do great things if we learn to work together. I believe in respect, in respecting your peers, in respecting your elders. I believe in duty. I believe in service, and I believe in honor. I believe also that as a councilman, we must also be models models to the residents in the community, models to the youth in our community, and we need to set the standard for what we expect of the people that we work with and what we expect of everyone in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sarnoy. Um, I'm born and raised in Monterey Park. <clears throat> I've done everything in Monterey Park growing up. I went to preschool here. I went to first grade and kindergarten at a school that doesn't even exist anymore, Children's Village. And I went to elementary school here, St. Thomas Aquinas. And I went to a local schools. I even went to East LA College. I got my associates there. And I even grew up through the Boys and Girls Club here in Monterey Park. 
And I also um, go to church here in Monterey Park. I praise the Live Worship Center. And everything that I do some, somehow leads, no matter where I go, I've been to 14 countries around the world. Everything that I do some, somehow just leads me back to this place. And, and I, something about it, I just love it. No matter where I go, I'm always going to be a part of Monterey Park. And I come back to, to come back to this place. And what my goal is here is just to always give back to the people. And, and by doing that, I feel that I need to do something for the youth and especially for the senior citizens. And for example, I, I recently attended um, the Japanese American Senior uh, uh, Event Association at the Montebello Golf Course, which is in association with the Langley Center. I try to support all the senior programs, and I believe that more can be done because they've given all of us, all of the residents here, so much and for the city. And I believe in giving back and being a good steward and especially for the youth and investing in our youth because they are the future. And those are my point of views, is giving back because I believe that as a resident that we should give back and pay, pay our dues and be a good steward. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your answers. Uh, I have several other really good questions here, but I see that we're running very short on time. So at this time, we will ask for closing statements from all the um, candidates. And since we began with Mr. Avila in the uh, opening statements, I will begin with Mr. Wong in the closing statements and work our way down to Mr. Avila. I thank the, the residents and voters of City of Monterey Park give me the opportunity to serve the City of Monterey Park for the last four years. I tell you that I enjoy being a council member, a public servant of all of you. I would like to continue to serve you to make sure that we will all work in harmony and bring the dignity back to the city council. We work together as a family, as a team, and we make sure that all the staffs administrators, and all the council members will care about each other, will respect each other, and make sure that we'll work together to build a better future for Monterey Park. I work with everybody. I work with all the elected officials. I work with our former mayor's council members, like Pat Reckenberger, we work together. Our Congresswoman, Judy Chu, Congress member, Adam Schiff, State Controller, John Chang, Sheriff Lee Becker, State Assemblyman, Mike Ng, Mayor Pro Tem, David Lau. We all work together because we all care about City of Monterey Park. So I would like to continue to have your support so that we will all work together to build a better future for all of us and a better future for our children in the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Riel Sebastian. As I mentioned in my introduction, Monterey Park is stepping into a new progressive age of transition. Our city is in a pivotal stage. Please, whatever you do, do not take this election lightly. We have in the past and now we're facing the consequences. As our city develops, we must have a city council that understands the issues of a, of a progressive city, one that understands legal, business, and financial issues, one that can articulate and communicate with the public and be a good representation of our city. As an attorney, business person, and a commissioner on Monterey Park's Economic Development Advisory Commi Commission, I am the only candidate with financial business, and legal experience. I am not beholden to any political party or special interest group. I am beholden to you, the residents of Monterey Park. For the last couple of years, I have attended city council meetings on a regular basis. I'm the only candidate up here that has voluntarily attended the city council meetings this year. We are at a crucial time. Some have said that this is a part-time job. Well, I completely disagree. 
Residents are giving up services. Employees are working more for less. I think that you expect, and I agree, that the city council should do more, should work more. Why? Because our residents expect it, because our residents deserve it. As I meet each one of you, I realize that we have the same common interests for our city. Please join me as we cherish our tradition and we embrace our diversity and we use transparency to move Monterey Park forward. When I think of our city, I think of Abraham Lincoln's quote, I am a slow walker, but I do not walk backwards. Please spread the word that there is a real choice in this election. Vote for Teresa Real Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Sarnoy. First and foremost, I want to thank you again uh, for having me this evening and giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts and vision for Monterey Park's future. You know, Sissy and Neiman, and gracias a todo por el apoyo y cap cap ya to con na cap con esa afternoon. Um, I just want to thank you so much, and you know, I just want to leave off with a with a with a quote that I spoke about two days ago by the great Albert Einstein, and um, and I said it already, and I'm going to say it again. And doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result is a definition of insanity. And that's the, that's basically what's going on right now in the city of Monterey Park. If we continue to go where we're going, then we're going to continue to get ourselves in the hole. And right now, I think we need new people to move forward with new creative ideas. And I think you're looking at the person right now because I believe that we need some innovation and some new ideas just to elaborate on and bring some new vision to the city. But I know the tasks ahead are not going to be easy. And, and as you know, I'm a professional boxer, and that's what I do by trade. And I'm going to work hard every day for Monterey Park schools. And when I get into the ring, I don't think about what the opponent's going to do to me. I think about what I'm going to do. And, and as Monterey Park residents, we can't look at what we can do. We got to look at what we could do. And, and that's my vision right now. And I'm, I'm going to look for the future and look forward. And I thank you for your support and your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Leong. In closing, I'd like to thank again the Optimist for producing this candidate forum and keeping this 27-year tradition alive. In addition to the thoughtful questions that were presented in tonight's forum, I believe that it's important for resident voters to also ask, can a candidate put personal pride and ego aside and serve with humility? Does a candidate embrace a collaborative attitude and have the ability to bring people together? Does a candidate have the ability to apply and maintain the proper focus necessary to find the best solutions for the city residents and its workers? And finally, do you believe that a candidate has the ability to create harmony, growth, and sustainability in our city of Monterey Park? I can say with the utmost sincerity and confidence that I'm committed to doing these things. It's time for new ideas and a new generation of leadership to take Monterey Park forward. It is said that clear vision coupled with precise action creates destiny. Let's create our destiny together. Regardless of who will stand victorious in the end, it is my hope that one day soon, the city council, city employees, and residents can stand together united and proudly say, we are the city of Monterey Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ng. It's been an honor to serve the community for the past 10 years. I've moved to Monterey Park in 1981 and graduated from UCLA with a BA in economics and my MBA in finance from Cal State LA. Some of you know me when I started my banking career at Home Savings of America here in Monterey Park 22 years ago and later became a branch manager. I also worked as a commercial loan officer for Bank of America and Wells Fargo Bank, providing lines of credit and commercial real estate financing for businesses in the San Gabriel Valley. Currently, I'm a relationship manager with Citizens Business Bank. I've been married to Gloria, who grew up in Monterey Park, who's a senior attorney for Southern California Edison, and we've been married for 22 years. We have a daughter, Chantal, who attends UCLA, and my son, Derek, attends Mark Keppel High School. We believe in supporting the youth of our community. We provided 92 $500 scholarships to Monterey Park graduating seniors from Mark Keppel, Schur, and Garfield High School. I chaired the successful fundraising efforts that raised $150,000 for the Hamburg Unified School District's band to march in the 2009 Rose Bowl Parade. I organized the Mark Keppel High School 
a band and orchestra amphitheater concert, which raised 40,000 in new instruments for the students, and also organized the first veterans concert to honor the veterans in the San Gabriel Valley. Some people ask me who they should, who they should vote for. I tell them that when the city council goes to closed door session and the door closes behind them, away from public view, we have the power to settle lawsuits in the tens of thousands of dollars. You need to vote for somebody who would fight for the residents of Monterey Park and protect the city's interest, even if the lawsuit involves the council members' friends and business acquaintances. You decide. I ask for your vote on March 8. I will continue to be your fiscal watchdog. Thank you, Mr. Jin. Once again, I'd like to thank the uh, Sarasimus for having such a wonderful forum and those who are here today. I want to bring a new leadership to the city council so we're all working together for the residents and the city. The city, in my opinion, has missed many opportunities to be the truly the gateway of the San Gabriel Valley. Let's not miss those opportunities again. Eight years of being a public servant has taught me many new lessons of being an elected official. We can't change things that happened in the past, but we can make those changes for a better future and move forward. I've been on the Board of Education, and I've worked with a $170 million budget. And in the past five, four or five years, saw that budget reduced by over $50 million, but still maintain a balanced budget. That is one of the many issues that I faced on the Board of Education for the last three or four years. If elected, I would bring my proven experience and leadership to the city council in being more proactive for the city as I've been for our school district. And I will also advocate as I have advocated for our students. In 2002, I had concerns about the unfunded liabilities that all our public agencies needed to address in their accounting procedures because of GASB 45. I addressed that concern with our Board of Education and administrative staff and added to our accounting procedure. In 2005 and 2006, as I look at the fiscal year ending but reports, I was concerned with our multi-year uh, projection and worked to increase our reserve by to 4.5% for the following year and, and be able to have a, a continuous cost containment and review of our, um, our budget. We just recently restructured our, uh, one of our bonds but to save our taxpayers $32 million. I learned that to solve a problem, it takes a team of city council, city manager, administration, employees, and the residents. I hope that we can resolve issues in the city and work for a better future and uh, for a better future for our city and future generation. I hope you'll vote for me, Bob Jen. Thank you, Mr. Estrada. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the Sraptums International for hosting this candidate forum. Even more important than that, for hosting a forum that is impartial and that includes all candidates that are running for office here in Monterey Park. <clears throat> I want to let you know that I have been serving you as a community leader since 1994 when I was sworn in at the city clerk's office uh, alongside the fire chief as a reserve firefighter and having served for a number of years. So know that I have been serving you for many years, but even more important, know that one thing I bring to, to the city is I bring youth, is I bring energy, and I bring a new vision for our city. This time, consider voting for all new city council, new faces that will move our city forward. We need to end the bickering from the past. We need to bring transparency. We need to make sure that when we have someone that's representing you, that's representing myself and my family, that that person isn't compromising uh, uh, negotiations with a, with, a, with, a, with a police officer association only so they can move up the ladder into Sacramento. Make sure that you know what that person's motives are. The only reason I'm running is because I lived here all these years and I see that Monterey Park is still in stagnant water. We need new change, we need new energy, we need new power and new council to move that city forward. What will I do as your councilman? Well, let me tell you. I'll make sure that all contracts go out through open bidding. I'm in nobody's pocket. I only serve you. Make sure that uh, we balance the budget, that we cut wasteful spending, that we provide better shopping opportunities, that we get better shopping opportunities when you go to the market, when you go shop for clothes, that we have a state of brothers, that we have variety. And we also make sure that we repair our city streets, we ensure that the marketplace begins constructions and creates new jobs for our local residents. And then most important, we want to make sure that we enhance the Chamber of Commerce to make sure that they enhance the business community. More important than that, you have another ballot on the measure. Make sure that you vote yes on BB. Vote for transparency. I'm going to, as your councilman, I'll make sure that I look up after your pocketbook, like look after our taxes. Vote yes on BB. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Vila. 
That's Avila. Thank you. I feel that I can relate it to the public because I'm Joe Public. Unlike most people, I have a good time and bad times. For example, I lost my father at an extremely young age. When a boy needs the guidance of a father, at that time, I was blessed with a caring family and a group of friends that are our family to me. In my life struggles to make ends meet, but through the grace of God and good people around me, and my own deter determination, I have been able to keep my head above water. In light of our current e e economical situation, this is, this is more than many fellow Americans have. This is not, this is not right when I see, it is not right when I see wrong. I, I am not a compelled to work, to work make things better. The place to start is locally. I am a handyman by profession. What I love about my job, I am provided with the opportunity to fix problems. We all know that there are many problems with our nation and country and state today and our beloved city currently faces. I want to give back to the city as I so much love. I want to be the everyday person's voice on the city council. As I stated before, I'm not a complex man, but when I see a problem, I want to fix it. I'd be honored if you give me the opportunity to sit on the council of Monterey Park. I will not fail. May the Lord be with you all. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. At this time, uh, I would like you to join me in thanking the candidates for their preparation for this evening and sharing their time with us. Thank you all for attending. As you know, the Monterey Park, the Seroptimus Monterey Park Rosemean does not endorse any candidate, but we encourage you to all go out and vote on Election Day. Thank you. <laughs>